pounds of pressure. That is not what I was hoping to see. So today we are hopefully going to be making some progress on getting my old Massey Ferguson backhoe running. I figured first things first, we might as well take a look at the spark plugs and the engine oil in this thing. Pulled the dipstick, finally figured out where the dipstick was. That was another smaller but still legitimate accomplish. Pull it out, it's got some really thick, really black looking oil on it, but it actually looks pretty good, you know, and something that old, especially a carbureted engine that just sort of inherently runs dirty. You know, you really expect that blackish color, but you know, I don't see any evidence of water being in there, of coolant, metal shavings, nothing along those lines. And also pulled out the spark plugs to my amazement. None of them were stuck in there. Pretty much just stuck the uh, socket on there with almost no force whatsoever. They popped loose. And uh, this is what we have. Again, they look very dark, but they look fine. There's no weird colors. There's no evidence of damage or anything along those lines. They even all look pretty decently well gapped to me. So the next thing we're gonna do is give this engine a proper compression test because if there's, you know, like a hole in the piston or anything along those lines, this will give us a really good indication of that before we go any further. So this is what we're using. This is the, uh, the OTC. I'm not too familiar with them, but evidently, according to my buddy Steve, the mechanic, they're actually, a, they're a really reputable, very highly desired brand. And, uh, and this is uh, the 5605 Deluxe Compression Tester Kit. Picked this up off of Amazon and I was looking at the reviews on it there before I bought it and somebody said, if it uses spark plugs, this is the kit you use to give it a compression test. And sure enough, it actually seems to be. Now, I wasn't surprised when it had all these different sizes in here for all the different common spark plugs, but I was a little surprised when it had even the really old school design like what you'd find on a tractor, which is according to this adapter, an M18 thread. So uh, yeah, definitely wasn't expecting that, but it sure is nice. So I guess we just take this M18 adapter thing, we put it on this hose here, and then we're gonna plug it into this. And I've never done this before, but whatever happens, you guys will get to see it. We'll go screw it into the engine, see if we can get this thing to spin. It's a little interesting reaching in here without the front of a uh, <laughs> conventional spark plug. Try to guide it into the hole if I can. Come on, all right. We're making tracks. Can't really get a socket on this now that we have the hose on there. Uh, this probably isn't the way to do this, but I'm not a mechanic, so. <clears throat> all right, so that's our first lesson of the day. It's much easier if you remove this hose screw in that fitting thing and then we get this hose back on ideally without cross threading it yeah we're in business we'll just get both of these tight enough so that things seal down on that o-ring and we should be ready to go it spins a lot better with a non <laughs> zombie battery that was sitting in it for five years and we brought it back from dead. Look at that, a little over 120 pounds of pressure. Not friggin' bad. I wasn't really sure what to expect with this, but you know, I'm not a mechanic. I don't know that much about engines, but for a 50 year old flathead, <laughs> relatively low pressure engine, I, I really don't think that's bad at all. Now we just have to do the other three and make sure one of them isn't destroyed. Oh, I reached for it like it was a spark plug and there's no stem to grab. <laughs> I'm genuinely amazed that this 1960s American-made backhoe uses metric threads on the spark plugs. Really did not expect this at all. But to be honest, you guys, I don't really care what it uses so long as we can get an accurate reading from it. Where'd my hose go? Oh, there it is. All right. Quick connect is quick connected. We're in business. Cylinder three. Pretty much exactly the same. How about that? This looks like uh, maybe 120 and a half, 121 perhaps. So far, so good. If nothing else, we can at least run it on two cylinders. <laughs> Cylinder two, here we go. Uh -oh. oh, we don't like that kind at all. Uh, let me double check all my connections here. Make sure I didn't forget to tighten something. 
We'll try that again, but unfortunately everything looked pretty decent to me. Well, that was a little better. Maybe, maybe there was a tiny leak that I didn't even realize was there as I was tightening stuff up. But man, that one's a little under 90 pounds of pressure. That is not what I was hoping to see. First test of the first cylinder. Oh yeah! Hey, we could live with that. We can live with that. That's really friggin' weird though. Three cylinders have plus or minus a pound or several, the exact same pressure, and then we have one that's like a little more than half that. I don't really know what to make of that, but I don't really like it. So good news and bad news. Good news is that three of those cylinders have what myself and my non-mechanic uh, layman's interpretation would be excellent compression, 120 plus PSI. Third one, not so much, but man, I'm thinking about it. I don't really know exactly what could cause something like that because I'm not a mechanic. If I was to make an extremely uh, broad guess, I would say that due to the fact it had the same amount of compression that it did, uh, it likely doesn't have you know a hole in the piston or in the, in the sleeve or whatever, so it might not be that serious. Famous last words. Uh, my guess would be perhaps there's a chance that uh, one of the valves isn't closing all the way. Maybe there's a piece of rust in there, or a piece of debris. Uh, you know, and it, it could be that as soon as we get this thing going, it'll just, just cough it out and be good. I don't really know. Uh, I gotta figure out exactly what I wanna do from here. Um, I'm sure some people, if they see something like that, they would probably start making plans for an engine rebuild, but I don't even have the Zetter all the way back together. And uh, I'm not planning to put that many hours on this backhoe, just a body or two. I mean, just a small foundation or two here or there for an outbuilding. Uh, that I have in mind, but um, yeah, I don't know exactly what the heck I'm gonna do. I'll probably give my buddy Steve the mechanic a call and maybe talk to a couple old tractor guys I know and see if this is really worth progressing on. Uh, that one cylinder having like a little over half the compression of the other three is a little bit of a concern, but for what I'm doing, worst case scenario, even if it isn't running on all four 100%, um, it probably wouldn't be the worst thing ever. And um, yeah, don't really know where to go from here, but a lot of you guys seem to have an idea of what's going on. So tell me in the comments below what you would do with this engine. If you'd say, screw it, give it some gas and some fresh plugs and see if she cranks, or if um, you'd be in the market for an engine rebuild kit right now. So um, if nothing else, we'll see if it'll run. But regardless, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend-ish, depending on when I actually post this video. It's Friday afternoon as I'm, post as I'm filming it. So thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Gotta do some research. Cheers.